Hi, thanks for joining us for the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. Seed catalogs have a dizzying array of choices. We'll talk about how to pick the right seeds for your garden. Also, planting bulbs now will give you beautiful early spring flowers. Today, we're going to show you how to plant tulips. And we'll talk about what gardening tasks need to be done over the winter. That's just ahead on The Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. Production funding for The Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South is provided by Goodwin's Landscape and Garden Center in Germantown since 1943 and continuing to offer its plants for successful gardening with seven greenhouses and three acres of plants plus comprehensive landscape services. International Paper Foundation The WKNO Production Fund The WKNO Endowment Fund and by viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome to The Family Plot. I'm Chris Cooper. Joining me today is Tom Ashore. Mr. Tom is a master gardener in Tipton County. Joellen Diamond is here. Joellen is a TSU Extension agent in Tipton County. And Mr. Good D is with us today. Thanks for joining Glad me. to be here. Thank you. All right, Mr. Tom, let's talk about selecting and buying seeds. Because over the winter, folks are going to get their seed catalogs. And they're going to want to buy a lot of seeds. So let's help them out. Well, first of all, the catalogs usually start showing up in November. OK. So. Uh, be patient, they'll be here in a week or two, if not a little bit longer. Okay. Well, let's talk about the advantages of growing plants okay. from seeds. Let's start with that. Well, the advantage of growing plants from seeds is your selection is humongous. If you're like, for example, looking for the tomato plants that your grandma used to grow, more than likely you'll find it in the catalog. Uh, so you got a tremendous selection of, of seeds. And the seeds catalogs also have a lot of information about the plants. Mm -hmm. Uh, general information about, say, for example, tomato plants, and then detailed information on each variety of tomato plants. Uh, it's fun. <laughs> it's fun. And also, you can save money, a uh, substantial amount of money if you're doing a lot of seeds. Okay. But if you're only going to do a couple tomato plants, then rather going through the trouble of doing it is to just go ahead and buy the couple plants that you want, if you can find the plants that you want. Okay. In your retail stores, <clears throat> excuse me, in the retail stores, you're lucky if they'll have maybe 15 varieties of tomatoes. A one seed catalog, a tomato seed catalog, has 450 varieties of tomatoes. Yes. They so also I have like 160, I think it was 185 varieties of different pepper plants. Mm -hmm. Everything from ornamental peppers to the ghost pepper. And uh, 60, 67, I say 60 to 70 uh, choices on eggplants. Mm -hmm. And this is all one catalog, and that is not all inclusive. So there, that's, that's a, the biggest advantage. Um, and like I said, uh, you can grow them. Uh, another big advantage of them is that, uh, especially from, like, from a catalog, is that you can order your seeds now. Mm -hmm. uh, retail stores, they usually don't get the seed packets in until after the Christmas season because the garden sections are usually where they, the seeds are. Yeah. And that's where they put the Christmas stuff. <laughs> so you have to kind of wait right. to get your seeds. And like I said, the selections are just too numerous, numerous to count, really. Okay. So those are the advantages. What about, of course, the disadvantages? Well, the big disadvantage is <clears throat> you're changing, uh, swapping your equity, which is sweat <laughs> equity, for the equity, sweat equity of the growers. So uh, it's not cheap. Uh, if you're going to just do a couple plants. If you're doing a lot of plants, then yes, it's cheap. A lot cheaper to do it that way. Uh, the catalog seeds are more expensive than the mm -hmm. local seeds. Also, catalog seeds uh, are usually sold by the number of seeds in the pack, whereas at the retail stores, they're sold by the weight, 30 milligrams, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to have some place to put the seeds. Mm -hmm. So you might may have to make a, one of the homemade grow stands to start them up, because you gotta have the right environment for it. And uh, you can't start tomato seeds outside in the winter time, no. or pepper <laughs> seeds, or whatever. Very few plants you can start. But the biggest disadvantage is the fact is it's time, and, but the kick is it's fun to see that life growing, you know? Sure. You get out there in the garden, I don't know about other gardeners like, like me, but many times I'm down there on my hands and knees waiting for the seats to germinate, checking them out. 
And when they do, it's just a big kick, you know, mm -hmm. it really is. Knowing that, hey, I started these plants from, from seed. What's another source for, for getting these seeds? Well, basically there's three main sources. Okay. Uh, first of all, the catalogs. Right. And you can go on the internet and look at them on, online, or you can order them, and they get sent them to you for free. There's a few companies that charge $5, very few, uh, but when you, with your first order, you get credit for the $5, so mm -hmm. it ends up not costing you anything. Uh, and a lot of the catalogs are general catalogs, like, like these are, where it has vegetables in one section, and then uh, flowering types mm -hmm. in the other section, and they're full, good-sized pictures, and a detailed write-up about each of the plants. Okay. Another source, of course, is the retail store, where they uh, got the different packets, but again, they're limited as to how much they could have on the shelves at any one time, the type okay. of seeds. So they may have like three or four types of cucumbers. But in reality, there's probably 100, 150 or more. types yeah. of, of cucumbers. Uh, another source is your feed and seed stores. Yeah. Okay, now they sell the seeds, common seeds, by a scoop. Now, this is vegetables. They don't usually mess around with flower seeds. They do have the packets, just like the retail stores. Mm -hmm. But on their <clears throat> vegetable seeds, they usually have scoops, which makes it really, really cheap to, to buy the seeds. Uh, and I also encourage people that when you order seeds from the retail, get them from the retail, or you order them from the catalog, or you get them from the feed and seed store, write down the year that those seeds are. Because if you don't use them all, you can put them in a refrigerator or freezer, and they'll keep it. Okay. So how do you go about picking the seed that's best for you, though? Well, <clears throat> again, excuse me. Uh, again, cool season, warm season. On one of the previous episodes, we talked about planting cool weather crops. Mm -hmm, I remember. Uh, so if you're going to start your like beets, uh, onions, lettuce, things of that nature, you want to start planting them uh, just before the season starts getting cooling off. And as everybody knows in the Mid-South, our springs are like that, <laughs> and our winter falls are like that. It seems like we go from hot weather to cold weather. So we have a short growing season mm -hmm. for the cool weather stuff. So the sooner you can start them, uh, the better it is. And what you pick for growing is what you like. All right. Okay, for example, I love beets. But, really? how, many, okay. <laughs> but how many people see beets in a produce uh, section mm -hmm. of a, of a uh, supermarket? And I was over at one of the places and uh, I look at their green onions. And there was like 12 green onions. The bundle was about this big. My green onions, one onion is that big. <laughs> so, and I like onions. Okay. My wife doesn't like me to eat onions, but I like onions. Uh, <laughs> but the main thing is growing what you like. There's no okay. need to grow something that, uh, number one, that the family doesn't like. Sure. Number two, if you've got limited space, grow the things that you like that's expensive. Bell peppers are expensive, but individually, 50 cents a piece. Uh, yellow squash, if you like yellow squash, if you grow them, and they're easy to grow, mm -hmm. uh, then grow those. But don't waste your time on things you don't like because, well, it's just the nature thing. You're supposed to grow these things. If you don't like <laughs> tomatoes, don't bother with them. Okay. All right. Well, we definitely appreciate that information, Mr. Tom. Thank you, my friend. All right. Thank you. There are great gardening events already planned for next year. Here are just a few of them. All right, Joel, and so you're going to tell us a little bit about planting bulbs, right? Yes. Tulips, specifically. Tulips. So what do we need to know to get started? Well, this is a typical area like you're going to see around okay. anybody's house. It's uh, got some shrubs next to it. Mm -hmm. It's next to the entrance of a, your door or mm -hmm. the porch. And you say, oh, I'd like to put some flowers <laughs> there. So we're going to start from scratch, just like the homeowners would start from scratch. Okay. First thing we're going to do is we're going to scrape off the mulch because we don't uh, you know, we want to save that because we don't incorporate that. So first we'll scrape off the mulch and then we're going to dig down a, uh, about eight inches and mm. turn the soil over and add some amendments. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and 
get that started. And you notice there are a few weeds in here, but That's we'll uh, we'll can, take those out. I can pull those out while you're doing that. And that looks good. Okay, it does. You want to dig down eight inches. And you see there's not as good soil there, but look, we've look got at the worms. worms. Right. Yay, so that means we've got good soil here. Good deal. And you just simply turn that over. It's nice and moist. Because we want to add amendments, but we do, we're going to incorporate those next. Okay. All right. All right. Now we're ready for our amendment. Okay. So what and do we have here that we're going to use? This is um, some organic compost with cow manure in mm -hmm. it, which has been decomposed, of okay. course. But you can use your own compost, like, you know, if you've made your own compost, that sure. would be something to add. Okay. And it will uh, loosen the soil, break up these large clods, and it will make the bulbs much happier in the ground. Yeah, we want the bulbs to be happy. We do. Do you want me to grab that and sit it so, up for you? <laughs> I always use my gloves. And we're just spreading this, right? Spreading this. We've got three bags to cover this area, so we'll kind of evenly just divide them. Let's start on this end. All right, Joel, and so we have down our manure. What do we do next? Uh, I would like to add a little bit of bone meal. Okay. It can be any kind, any type of bone meal. This happens to be an organic one. Okay. And we will uh, sprinkle that down on, we'll sprinkle that down on the bed because okay. we want to incorporate it now because we want to in, amend it inside because we need to get it down deep in the ground, like about at least six inches so that the bulbs will benefit from it. Okay. Now, what does bone meal do? What's the purpose of it? It's uh, uh, mostly phosphorus, okay. and that will help the roots to establish and okay. the stems and the shoots to grow okay. for the bulbs. All right. And it doesn't take a whole lot. Yeah, I was going to ask you how much do you actually put down. I, okay. I kind of just sprinkle lightly because we don't want to overdo it, but we do want an even coat mm -hmm. on the ground. And very good. That's hey, all that's we will need. Even. How about that? And now we will incorporate it with the compost in the ground. Okay. And can I have the, uh, yeah, that one. Okay. This is too heavy to do that with. And it will look like this is a little bit raised, but that's the whole point, to get good drainage. Okay. This drainage is so important. We don't want those bowls to rot, of course. I would say we're ready to set our bulbs and plant. All right. And what kind of bulbs do we have today? We have two different types of bulbs. We have the yellow daffodils, and we've got red impression tulips. Okay. We're going to set the a few daffodils at the back because they will stay in the bed and we won't want to disturb them. Okay. Now this is going to be a real good lesson because most folks don't know which end to put in the ground. So we're going to yeah. find out for Joanna which one to do. Yeah. Well, um, the pointy end goes up. If you can see this right here, those are actually roots that have dried up and they'll, it'll form new roots at the base here. Okay. So this is end goes down and the pointy end goes up because that's where the stalk will come out right. with the daffodils. I like to set things out first and then plant. <laughs> now how far apart should they be? Now, does it matter? I like to put daffodils about 12 inches apart because they multiply. Okay. And I'll put our tulips in front. And tulips are the same way. 
the fat part of the tulip is the bottom, the pointy end is the top, roots will come out down at the mm -hmm. bottom, stalk will come up at the top. Okay, good deal. And depending on how thick you want these, I want these to be an accent because we've also decided to put pansies on top of this for mm -hmm. winter color. And these will come up in the spring okay. through, the, through the pansies. Through the pansies. Okay. So we don't want to plant them too close together. Now we're ready to plant, but if you'll notice, these are planted every other, kind of in a triangular pattern. Yeah, I noticed that. If you put them that way, it'll look fuller and take up less plants. And they'll be evenly spaced. Okay. And you can plant with either a bulb digger or a trowel. And if you'll notice, both of these are marked at four inch intervals, so it tells you your depth of four inches. Okay. And most of these bulbs, six inches is all you really need. Our soils in this area are really heavy. Mm -hmm. And for drainage purposes, we would like to have them no more than six inches deep. Now that we've got the bulbs all planted, we have decided to put pansies on top of that Good. for the winter color. Okay. So what we're gonna do is put down a little bit of slow release fertilizer. Okay and that's to feed the pansies all winter long. Okay. Then we're gonna rake the mulch back over the dirt area. All right. And then we're gonna set out our pansies and plant them. Now these, you wanna make sure we don't get into the crown of the plant. Okay. Crown of the plant is at the soil surface. So we really don't wanna plant these any deeper than the soil is here. So don't try to cover up Mm -hmm. the top of the, the plant because you'll bury the crown. Okay. And yet you do want enough soil. It, what I usually do is I scrape the mulch away and just put a little bit of mulch near the plant but not up against the stem. How about that? That looks good. Now these will grow and fill in and then the bulbs will come up in the spring and give us a di completely different look. That's going to be nice. All right. But Joellen, we definitely appreciate this demonstration. Thank and we can't welcome. wait to see the beautiful colors in the spring too for the bulbs. I can't wait. All right. Thank you much. You're welcome. All right, Mr. D, this is our final episode for the season. so. You know, we want to let folks know what they can do over the winter time to prepare for next year. So with that being said, what do we need to do to get prepared for the winter? If you're uh, putting your garden to bed and you're not going to do any gardening like you are, Mr. Tom, uh, I, I would kind of break it down into taking care of my tools, mm -hmm. you know, my hand tools, taking care of my, my uh, gasoline powered equipment. And, and my spray equipment. You kind of break it down into those three. Those are the three things that I try to take care of getting your equipment ready. Yeah. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about that and then we'll mention briefly uh, some of the spray applications that you may want to put out on fruit trees if you have okay. fruits over the, over the winter. But uh, on uh, your hand tools, uh, I would uh, make sure they're clean. That's the number one thing, your shovels and hose and rakes and things like that, make sure they're clean. Uh, coat the metal parts with a light coat of oil. You can use WD-40 or you can mm -hmm. use uh, uh, your burnt cylinder oil that you have left over when you change the oil in your, in your lawnmower or your tiller and, and uh, have an oily rag that's mm -hmm. saturated with that and, and make sure that all the metal parts are coated with a light coat of oil one way or the other. If you have wooden handles, uh, lightly sand those wooden handles. Uh, I know the shovel that you used, one of the shovels you <laughs> used was really interesting. It's, yeah. it's one that I'd love to get some boiled linseed oil on. <laughs> but oil, oil that shovel up and, and then, and then uh, take, a, 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 again, a shop cloth or a piece of a towel yeah. or an old T-shirt and saturate it with boiled linseed oil and just rub it all up and down that handle 
and, and, and it'll be ready for another year of work. Uh, <coughs> sharpen, you know, yeah. your, your shovels and your hose and all that, have, you know, go ahead and knock the burrs off of them if you've hit rocks with them and things like that and, and do that before you coat it with oil. And uh, that should have your hand tools, you know, ready to go. Uh, as far as your uh, tiller and your lawnmower and your things like that, change the oil, put clean uh, air filters in. Uh, uh, probably best to uh, run the fuel out of them, let them run completely out. Okay. That's probably the best thing to do. If you're going to be using your, like I'm going to use my mower all winter, mulching leaves. Yeah, I will too. Uh, I make sure that I have stabilizer in the gasoline. Yeah. <clears throat> make sure you do have you know, stabilizer in your gasoline. And you'll be okay to leave that fuel in, in your machines if you're going to be using them over the winter. Um, and I do that anyway. Yeah. Uh, um, your sprayers, uh, you know, by all means wash them out. Take the, uh, the tips out and, and, you know, put them in detergent. Your strainers and, and all of those and, 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 and rinse your triple rinse, your sprayers, and hang them upside down where they can completely dry out. And, and uh, you know, you'll be good to go there. Okay. Um, and uh, as far as uh, fruit trees, uh, look at the home orchard spray guides. Uh, there are some dormant sprays that you might want to put out. You know, after all the leaves have come off, come off mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're probably a little bit early on that right now. But as you get on over into the winter time, you can spray with dormant oils and, and on apples and pears, liquid lime sulfurs and yeah. things like that to take care of some of the insects that might overwinter mm -hmm. uh, on, in the bark crevices and things like that. But uh, that'll kind of get you going in the right direction, getting ready for winter. Okay. Now I know you did have some information about deer because I know deer. a lot of folks are having problems with deer this fall into the winter. So yeah, let's let's help them out with that. Deer season will soon be open. <laughs> it opens around Thanksgiving. Actually, muzzleloader season opens quicker than that. I think it's already open, and both season is already open. And, and you know, if you get a twelve-year-old with a <laughs> with a two forty-three or two twenty-three, you know, take them out. Uh, they're a real problem, and yeah, uh, you know, uh, I got hit by a deer last year. So um, fortunately, I, the score still, I've taken more deer than deer have taken me, <laughs> but it did several thousand dollars worth of damage to my pickup truck, oh. and um, uh, that's not an uncommon occurrence. Uh, rut is about to start, <clears throat> and deer are even crazier during rut than wow. they are any other time of the year. That means, uh, you know, the, the females come in heat, and, and so the, the bucks are chasing them, and they're more active right around dusk, early morning or late after, you know, in the evening, they're kind of crepuscular. They like the low light times, and have your headlights on bright when you can. You know, don't wow. blind the oncoming traffic, but get them, get them on bright as soon as you can, and, and uh, you know, blow, use your horn and slow down. If you see one that crosses the road, that definitely doesn't mean that's all of them. There may be another <laughs> right. bigger one right behind it. That's right. Uh, as far as in your uh, landscape, I know they're creating some damage, uh, eating, you know, there's not as much green foliage out there now, so they're coming into yards and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, fences, exclusions. Uh, uh, you can uh, uh, tie a dog out in the yard, oh. you know, tether a dog. I mean, this is really, uh, you know, a tethered, <laughs> a tethered dog, barking dog would do a, a lot to keep deer out of your, your landscape. But if you go with a fence, you've got to have at least eight feet tall. And that's not a, you know, you're talking about two four foot fences right. on top of each other. Um, oh my goodness. If you're choosing landscape plants and you're in a deer, in a highly, you know, populated deer area, uh, go to the UT Extension or TSU Extension. They they can give you a list of plants that deer don't like quite as much as others, and you know plant the ones that are least attractive to deer, and that that will help you there. Uh, there are some repellents out there that might give you some temporary relief, mm -hmm. but uh, and, and you know and you know human hair uh, and things like that you know, might give you some temporary relief, but don't count on it to be uh, permanent. Wow. And uh, it's just a uh, Sign of the times. Uh, yeah. Can't beat that 12 year old with a 20 gauge. You know. <laughs> I've got my young apple trees. I have, <clears throat> I think I have half a dozen apple trees, and two of them the deer are, are using to sharpen their antlers on. You oh, know, wow. and, you know, they're, they're, to, they're deer rubs. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I will take care of that. I oh, do not you... live in the city, <laughs> but I will take care <laughs> of that. You will take oh, care of it. Okay, I'm sure you will. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then, Mr. Tom, Joellen. 
Mr. D, we're out of time. Thanks for being here. Yeah. You're welcome. Well, that's all we have time for today. This is our final episode for this season. I want to thank you all for watching and sending in your gardening questions. And thank you to all of our guests for sharing their expertise with us. We're going dormant for the winter, but we'll be back next year to help get your garden going again. In the meantime, don't forget, county extension agents are there to answer questions year round. So don't hesitate to give us a call. I'm Chris Cooper, and I'll see you next year on The Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. Thank you, be safe. Production funding for the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South, is provided by Goodwin's Landscape and Garden Center, in Germantown since 1943, and continuing to offer its plants for successful gardening with seven greenhouses and three acres of plants, plus comprehensive landscape services. International Paper Foundation. The WKNO Production Fund. The WKNO Endowment Fund and by viewers like you. Thank you.